welcome to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm your host, Pete Mazzetti. My guest this week, this evening, is Tina Bascom from Bear Necessities. Tina, welcome. How are you? I'm good, Pete. How are you? I'm good, thanks. I'm good. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, again, this is not the Valley Shore Community TV studios. I guess this is the new norm because I'm in my home office. Tina, you're in your home office, and the person producing this program tonight is in his home office. So I guess this this is going to be the new norm late recently and going forward for the next couple of weeks of doing stuff from home. How are you, how are you guys adjusting? Uh, for me, it's kind of, uh, you know, I'm still out and about as with, oh, okay. uh, you know, bare necessities being an essential, uh, need of, mm-hmm. uh, distributing diapers and wipes. Uh, right. I am, you know, still at the warehouse, bagging diapers, getting distributions ready. Um, I did a distribution yesterday afternoon, I'm dropping off to social services, dropping off to our partner, uh, St. Mary's Church in Clinton. Um, You know, they're still running, uh, you know, appointment only type of hours. Their their church office is closed. Um, I've got social service drop-offs tomorrow. I did, you know, so I'm really out and about a lot. Um, I'm in my home office slash sewing room right now. Um, That's all the thread behind me. Oh, there you go. (laughs) So um, I've been making masks in my spare time, but, uh, you know, Bare Necessities right now is uh, pretty, pretty busy. So um, as as more and more people are out of work, uh, the demand is increasing tremendously. So so we've... uh, so tell us a little bit about your organization for those of us that don't know what Bear Necessities is. So Bear Necessities is a diaper bank and we supply diapers and wipes to families in need from Brantford to Old Saybrook. Okay. Um, we distribute through local food pantries and we also have some other partner agencies that we distribute like the social services office, social service offices in each town. And um, we have, St. Mary's is one of our partner agencies. Birthright in Clinton is another one of our partner agencies. And so uh, we don't vet our own clients and that's why we deal with partner agencies. So they vet Mm -hmm. our clients for us and we distribute once a month. Um, We started, we became a 501c3 in November of 2015. So we are in our fourth year and um, in that our first distribution in December of 2015 was five babies. And now before COVID, the whole coronavirus, um, we were up to almost close to 400 babies that we distributed to monthly. And so, you know, who knows where we're going to end up at this point in time. So now where, where, where's your warehouse and facility located? So we are warehouses in Madison, actually. Um, we're okay. very fortunate to have a warehouse, an 1,100 square foot warehouse space um, in Madison um, th- in one of the Milano um, complexes. Oh, sure. And so we have a loading dock um, that was one of the our priorities because to expand our program, we needed to be able to find a way to get a lot of diapers um, yeah. and we all the diaper banks across the country belong to the national diaper bank network. And it's kind of like a agent. It's a kind of a, a, I don't know how to describe what it is, but it's like a all encompassing umbrella for us all to be able to get resources from um, Huggies is the founding sponsor and they oh, have gosh. a program called path to path 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 way to provide and we're able to get our diapers at a really reduced cost. So, um, so we, um, almost two years ago, we started leasing the warehouse space. And, um, before that we were in our houses in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And then we were very fortunate. The Valley Shore YMCA, uh, gave us space, which I think last time I was on, we were in that space. We were, I think uh, so warehousing in that space and we quickly within a year we were outgrowing that space and we oh, couldn't wow. expand our program until we had a warehouse so so that's where where we are now so okay. um i have a shipment of uh about thirty seven thousand diapers coming tomorrow oh boy um, yeah so uh with what we have in our already in our inventory 
that should probably get us through till the end of August. Okay. So, so. Now, as far as the what's going on in the world right now with the pandemic, how does that affect what you guys do with Bare Necessities? So um, what we've normally we kind of keep track of who gets diapers and you have to be, you know, part rostered onto the program. And right. with us now, we just want to get diapers to whoever needs them. If if they arrive at the food pantry and they get food, um, everything's done by drive through now. We don't right. have any, you know, direct contact. Um, so if they drive through and get food and then they drive through and they need diapers, you know, we're just giving them to them. Um, we're also getting increased calls from social services because they've all listed us on their 211 as, mm -hmm. you know, if they're in our area. So we're getting more calls that way. Um, the way we distribute is different. Um, this month we decided the, for the month of April, we decided to give two months worth of diapers. So we gave oh, nice. April and May because we weren't sure what was going to be happening. Like, right. would we have to shut down? Mm -hmm. um, and we didn't want our clients to be without diapers. So, no, definitely we, not. so we will not have a physical distribution other than an emergency situation until June. Wow. So, yeah. So it's been speaking a little of, different. Yeah. Speaking of the month of June, you guys have an event coming up. We do. Hopefully. So, <laughs> yeah, I know. I think we're going to have to get a little rec uh, creative. Our uh, <laughs> our largest fundraiser, our Ducky Dash for diapers. Yeah. Is, uh, we're turning five this year. This will be our fifth uh -huh. year we've held the race. And it basically is an old fashioned duck race where we um, take however we we have tickets available. We, you five dollars gets you a duck that gets dumped into the water. OK, um, you're eligible for one of I think we have 14 prizes secured. Oh, wow. Uh, so we've got, you know, all varying degrees. The grand prize is a, a $250 gift card to Great Wolf Lodge with an overnight stay. Oh, yes. nice. So we've, we've got uh, Red Sox tickets. We've got Yankee tickets. And, you know, obviously we don't know what's going to be going on with the sporting things, but we uh, yeah. have secured them. Uh, we reached out to our donors and they said that they would uh, honor them for the 2021 season if we're not, right. a, if there's no baseball going on. Exactly. So, um, you know, we've got a Block Island excursion. Oh, cool. So the date of the Ducky Dash is June 20th. Right. And um, we are probably going to be selling, trying to figure out how to sell our $5 duck tickets, which by the way, buys three days worth of diapers and wipes for a baby. Uh -huh. um, we're trying to figure out how to do that virtually. So, um, so we're going to get creative. Uh, we're going to reach out to, you know, Facebook friends, uh, uh, all our social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram. Um, we can't, because it's charitable gaming, we can't sell tickets on our website or no. our, our, our business, our bare necessities right. page, but we can certainly, people can certainly sell them for us. And so I think we're going to have to get a little bit creative and work that way. And then we may have to get creative with the actual day of the race. Um, that we're, we're working on some ideas, uh, probably the likelihood of us having, being able to have, you know, two to 300 people in one location on yeah. June 20th isn't going to be a possibility. No. Um, so if we can have a small amount of people, if, even if we just had like six board members, mm -hmm. um, we could still duck, dump the ducks in Indian river if, if the town allows us to. Absolutely. Um, and then if that doesn't work, we're thinking about reaching out to a couple of friends of ours that have uh, in-ground swimming pools and putting all the ducks in the pool and then pulling them out with like a little goldfish net. Oh, um, cool. So, you know, we're getting creative. So, yeah. um, so definitely, you know, everybody should be on the lookout uh, and check uh, within the next couple of weeks, check our website, which is www.barenecessitiesct.org. Um, and there'll be information and ways that you can purchase tickets. We'll put all that on there as soon as we've got some 
for finalized, formalized ideas. So. Absolutely. And yeah. what types of other information can they find on the website? Um, you can find ways to donate. Um, right now we are not having any volunteers. So unfortunately no. there's no volunteering. Um, you know, we're not able to really do diaper drives and wipe drives and things like that right now. So there's ways to donate, um, through our secure PayPal, you can, um, sponsor a baby. Um, you know, we also have, uh, you know, if people just want to make a donation, we do have a Venmo account that people can donate to. And that's um, at bear dash necessities. Um, that's our Venmo or our PayPal is a, a link on our website. So, All right. yeah. So. so how many of you guys are there in the bear necessities organization? So we have 11 board members all together, including myself. So, and we are an all volunteer and uh, you know, we're very grateful to have so many like-minded people on our team that believe in our mission of, you know, helping as many babies as we can, because one in three babies in the country have a diaper need. Right. And there's no government assistance for diapers. You can't no. snap, you can't use WIC. Um, you can't send your baby to daycare without a full day's supply of diapers. And, That's right. you know, they're 57% of moms miss on average four days of work a month because they don't have enough diapers to send their babies oh, to wow. daycare. Wow. So, so our team really, you know, is supportive. Everybody jumps in, everybody has a job, everybody's doing something. Um, you know, a lot of our board is still working, even yeah. amidst the COVID-19, they're still mm -hmm. working. So, um, you know, and some of them are busier than ever, um, oh, yeah. you know, with layoffs, they're doing two and three jobs. So, you know, so it's, we're so grateful to everyone. We've been having virtual, we've been having Zoom board meetings. So there you go. Um, we've got one next week. Um, so, you know, it, we're just really, really thankful that we have such a great team behind us. So who's, who's on your board? Um, so Beth Sarah Loud, who is um, my, uh, the founding, one of our founding members, okay. um, Pam Cyrus, um, she's a, uh, she she's on our board rose mclaughlin uh rod bascom my husband yeah. um ed pellegrino uh denise mangano i'm trying to go around the table barbara manko I, i'm going around the table when we hold our meetings and gotcha <laughs> um, maria anderson uh elaine johnson um i think i hit them all Okay. Which is pretty good. <laughs> it is pretty good. I'm impressed. <laughs> so what, what, else, what else do we want to talk about bare necessities and get the word out spread out on the organization? So um, I think, you know, a diaper need hits everyone. What we're finding right now is, you know, diaper need is not something that's talked about or many people know. And many people say, well, it's not happening in our, our town. You know, right. we don't have a need. Um, and that's a really, it's, that's really not the case. Um, every family, as we're seeing right now, is a, one catastrophic, you know, incident away from having a diaper need or a food need. Right. And, um, you know, with bare necessities, it's, you know, we focus on the diaper need um, because that's the number one stressor for moms. Yeah. Um, you know, they even above food um, it for maternal depression, that is what causes most moms to have maternal depression mm -hmm. is not being able to have enough diapers for their babies. Right. Um, so, you know, we're slowly getting out there. We have in February, we were fortunate to have our law enforcement diaper drive, which was huge this year. I we saw that on social media. We had, we, it was so successful. The police departments, we added, we ended up with seven to police departments this year that uh, wow. joined in the, we, d we added North Brantford and East Haven this year um, to our group. And they collected over 38,000 wipes and wow. I think 30,000 diapers. So oh, yeah. yeah. And it's really awesome to see how, 
um, the whole departments, like just get the community involved. And it's been such a great community builder for all of us. Mm -hmm. Um, so we were really fortunate and old Saybrook, um, was holding their drive for the month of March. And obviously that kind of, we know there's diapers and wipes there, but we can't quite get them yet. So yeah, they'll be there when, you know, they don't, they don't go bad. So, nope. so they'll be there when, uh, we can get over there safely and get them. But there were really the, that was one of our biggest, um, diaper drives and kind of set us up to be pretty well stocked once all of the, you know, COVID hit. So, exactly. um, so that was really good, but you know, we're still in business. We're still functioning. You um, you know, we are, uh, you know, it's going to be tough. Uh, you know, fundraising is going to be tough this year. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to, you know, it's not going to be what we had expected it to be. So we're right. just going to have to get creative. We've already got some super generous donations, um, that people have just found us or, heard about us or whatever and have sent donations in and we're so grateful. Um, we're really grateful to our um, community partners, uh, the Guilford Foundation, the Westbrook Foundation, Community Foundation of Middlesex County, Essex uh, Savings Bank, Guilford Savings Bank, um, and all of our private donors because without them, you know, we wouldn't exist, um, you know, through grants and donations and just them being, you know, believing in our mission, um, you know, to get as many babies as possible, the help they need. So what so. is the mission of the organization? So the mission is to supply diapers and wipes to families in need on the shoreline. Okay. Um, that's, it's, it's a simple mission, but it's, it's a powerful one because yeah that's what we want to do. You know, ideally in a perfect world, we'd love to be able to be part of wiping out uh -huh. needs, so there's no longer a need. But, you know, I don't think I'll see that in my lifetime, but no. you know, we're, we're, you know, we're growing and we're continuing to help. And, you know, we're, we have great partnerships with some of the other local diaper banks. Um, when we did the, uh, diaper drive, the, the law enforcement, I went up and met with the North Branford food pantry because all the diapers that were collected in North Branford, we gave to the food pantry in North Branford. We didn't uh -huh. keep those because we don't service North Branford yet. No. And so I was speaking with the pantry manager and she was meeting with the woman that runs social services and uh -huh. they started talking about, um, you know, doing a diaper bank. So that was one really cool thing is that they, you know, we were in the works of them trying to be up and running and, and start their own diaper bank up there. So being able to help small, you know, things like that to be able to help and be a sounding board or, you know, information for people that want to start a diaper bank in their town. Um, that's been, you know, that's another mission is to just to be able to keep spreading the word. Just really it's awareness. I mean, every diaper we collect, every person we talk to, you know, coming on and speaking with you, whoever hears this mm -hmm. may not oh, yeah. know about diaper need. And now they do. Exactly. So, now, what towns do you guys cover? So we cover, we distribute through the, our, our food pantries we distribute through is the Shoreline Soup Kitchen and Pantry model. Oh, sure. So we you know, we have clients from all the locations that they allow their clients to come from. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, you know, we have some clients in Ex Essex, some in Old Lyme, some in Chester, Deep River, Killingworth, you know, Clinton, Madison, Westbrook, Old Saybrook. Um, while we don't physically distribute in the Essex, Chester, Deep River area, right. we still do have clients from those areas our largest base of clients come from Clinton. Nice. So that's our, and Old Saybrook is a new pantry. We just started distributing there in July. Okay. And with them and social services. And so, um, you know, when we were the first six months, you know, it was kind of figuring out the program and we were already up to like over a hundred babies that we were helping in six months. So, so that was really 
a good, you know, we were, we were waiting to be able to get over there and um, the program's running really well over there. Nice. Yeah. From what I understand, they also have a new executive director at the soup kitchen. Yes, they do. Better yet. Yes, she's super nice, Amy. She's it's super nice. So, um, you know, just it, you know, so I've met her a couple of times. I had met oh, her okay. even before she became the executive director. She's been part of the um, part of the organization for quite some time. So, oh, no. um, but yeah, I mean, you know, this tough time to be a leader in a nonprofit and. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's a, uh, you know, it, 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 you'll, it's unfortunately, you're going to see a lot of nonprofits not be able to continue, you know, because of funding. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, we're, 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 we're re working really hard to not be one of them. And, oh, you know, we have no plan of being one of them. So no, um, we've got, you know, we've been meeting and really talking about the long term with our board. So. And with the town of Clinton, we have a new town manager. I actually met him recently and we were supposed to do, if the funny thing was, is we were him and I, him, myself and Chris Hanuskovich, who's the chairman of the town council for the yeah. town of Clinton. The three of us were supposed to do an edition of my show right before the COVID-19 broke. Wow. So it's well, like, I haven't met him yet. So oh, he's always oh, he's really, he's really nice. I, st I stopped in a couple weeks ago, right before the, right before the COVID broke, I, st I happened to be in the town hall and I popped my head in and saw Mary Scatino and I happened to ask her, I'm like, is Car I'm like, is Carl in? And can I just stick my head in and say hi? She's like, let me see. We spent about 15 minutes together. And nice. he's like, I apologize that we were, he emailed me. He's like, I apologize about the COVID-19 outbreak. <laughs> I know that's not my, con my control, your control, anybody else's control. But he's like, once everything breaks and the world gets to a normal, a normalcy, I want to reschedule with you. I'm like, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, he's, a, I, from what I under, I live in Madison, so I don't live oh, in okay. Clinton. But um, from what I understand, he's a really good listener. Like oh, yeah. he really is taking it everything in and really trying to gather as much information as he can about everything to be able to make really good decisions and recommendations, Absolutely. you know, Absolutely. which is, which is great, which is really great. So, so what else we want to educate everybody about bare necessities? So bare necessities, let me just see. I got, I got my little list here. All so right. I made, I made a little list. So I, okay. I have, I always have talking points, you know. I'm, just saying, so. I'm going off mine too, so we're good. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so one of the things that we did, we've done, um, mm -hmm. and through our, a, a grant from the uh, Community Foundation of Middlesex County, is we surveyed our clients to oh, see wow. how our diaper bank was working. Um, you know, were we being effective? Um, right. Was there a need we weren't meeting? And um, while we didn't get much different information than we thought we would get, there mm -hmm. were a couple of, little, you know, I think percentages and things that were a little interesting that came out of the survey. We worked with Megan Smith, who is a psychologist at Yale University, okay. and she has developed a program called the Moms Program in um, New Haven. And okay. what it does is it helps moms through the whole process and you know, helps them with job training and all sorts of like networking and that kind of thing. So yeah. she helped us design the survey, which was great. But um, we 68% of our families reported that they didn't have enough diapers to change their babies oh, as wow. often as they should. And 48% of them said that they, um, even with the diapers, that we give them, mm -hmm. they still don't have enough diapers. Okay. So we give out a supplement every month and we don't give out the full month supply. And it's right. about between anywhere between 60 and 70% of what their monthly need is. Oh, the wow. average baby needs um, six to 10 diapers a day. So, yeah. um, so, you know, we give out you know, a percentage uh, right around 60 to 70%, depending on the size. So, mm -hmm. you know, we meet more than most, we give out more than most diaper banks do um, mm -hmm. because that's just one of the things we wanted to do from the get-go. That was part of our, our business plan in the beginning. So 55% um, of our families said that um, if 
they don't have enough diapers, they leave have to leave their baby in diapers longer than they should. Yeah. And um and 39% said that they would eat less food and not buy food to be able to put diapers on their babies. Aww. So, yeah. So it's it's pretty staggering you know how if, how the need doesn't even just it doesn't affect just one person in the family it affects mm -hmm. the whole family right um you know that mom that has to make that decision of you know i go to and they can't afford to go to big box stores no definitely not so they're going to the you know stop and shop cvs or wherever mm -hmm. or to the local you know penny penny and right buying Bye. diapers there because they only have ten dollars Exactly. You know, well, Tina Baskin from Bear Necessities, we're out of time. So I want to thank oh, wow. you and hopefully we'll see you soon. Thank you, P. It was yeah, great to see Tina. you. Be safe and be well. You too. On behalf of Tina Baskin, I'm Pete Mazzetti. Thanks. Good night. And we'll see you next time.